everybody, this is Nick from Exploring Audio, and uh, this video is about the Roland Juno 106, uh, one of my very favorite synthesizers, and more specifically about what to do when you start to have voice chip issues with the Juno, which is very common to happen with these. Uh, mine just started to have issues with it. One of the voice chips is cut out, um, but uh, my friend Matt's had issues a couple months ago, and we shot some video of that, and uh, that's what this video is all about. This video is pretty heavily based on Cinegrader and his YouTube channel. I strongly recommend checking out his channel and many Juno videos. This guy is a complete expert. And before you open one of these up, I really recommend checking his stuff out. All right, so voice chip issues. What exactly does that sound like? Uh, let's just try to play a couple of random notes and see what ends up happening. Sounds fine. It sounds a little bit weird, right? D, F sharp, A. So basically, certain notes on the keyboard are going to stop working. Uh, you'll find that there may be a pattern to these notes, or sometimes the notes might shift around. But basically, there's a way to check um, exactly what's going on. All right, so the first thing to do to test this is to turn the Juno off. Then, as you're turning it on, hold down the key transpose button. Then you're going to want to press poly 1 and 2 at the same time. Now this is going to allow you to test the voice chips one at a time. Now as I hit these keys repeatedly, you'll see the display tell me which voice chip is being triggered at a given time. You'll notice there's no sound on voice chip two. So it would seem that voice chip two on the Juno is the faulty one. So that's what we're gonna have to look at. Coincidentally, it was the same voice chip on Matt's Juno as well. So uh, that's what we're gonna switch over to right now. All right, so the first step in opening up your Juno is to take off these side panels. There are five Phillips head screws that hold the uh, side panels on. Um, only the two ones are really necessary to do this, but it does make it a little bit easier just to take the whole thing off. All right, so now that you've taken the side panels off, the front control panel should just flip right up. Um, it's on a hinge. It makes it really easy for you to get at the insides whenever you have to do any kind of repairs on these. All right, so this circuit board over here on the left is the one we're gonna focus on. You can see these three groups of three black rectangles. Those are the chips. Uh, the chips in question. Um, the ones on the outsides of the groups, the ones that are a little bit closer to the keys, those are the voice chips. And you can see from right to left, they're numbered one, two, three, four, five, and six. So if number two is the problem, you can see that's the one that we're gonna really have to focus on. But in this case, we're gonna do all of them just to make it easier. All right, so the next step is to disconnect these little groups of wires that are connected to the board. Uh, they're very sturdy, so you don't really have to worry about damaging anything. Um, but again, be careful. The circuit board's held down by six Phillip head screws. Those just come right out. And in the top left, there's actually one wire that's uh, soldered right in there. So you have to cut that and you'll have to re-solder um, that on when you put the thing back together in the end. And with all that disconnected, the whole board should just pull right out. All right, so now looking at the back of the board, this may be hard to see, but each of the voice chips have 11 legs on them, which means that uh, all in all, you're gonna be soldering and desoldering 132 times uh, to take these all off and put them back on. Uh, this isn't something I'd recommend for somebody just starting out, but uh, it's not tricky, but uh, it is pretty monotonous. So it would help if you've had a little bit of experience with soldering before. All right, and here are the voice chips desoldered from the board. All right, so now take the voice chips and drop them into the acetone. Uh, you're gonna wanna cover up your container, and most people would recommend leaving them there for about two to three days. So if you remember before we put them into the acetone, the voice chips were completely hard. Now they're gonna feel really rubbery. It looks like it's exploding off of the voice chip. Um, it's gonna be really easy to remove it. 
You should just be able to use your fingers to remove most of this. Uh, it should be very rubbery and easy to pull off at this point. Um, if it's hard at all, I'd recommend doing another day in the acetone um, and especially be careful with the side that actually has the components on it because these are all surface mounted components. If the epoxy is still hard at all, you could actually risk pulling some of the uh, components off when you pull the, the epoxy off. So uh, yeah, I would recommend doing another day if it's still hard at all. So at this point I have about 95% of the epoxy removed. You can still see some around some of the uh, the wiring and around the legs of the surface mount chips, but uh, this is pretty good. And what you can actually do is take an X-Acto knife and be very, very careful and actually use it to scrape off just that little tiny bit more. But again, um, if it's still pretty hard, I would throw it back into the acetone and it'll make it a whole lot easier. All right, so what we're gonna do is actually take these sockets and solder those to the board, so that way the voice chips aren't gonna be soldered directly to the board anymore. This makes it incredibly easy to replace them in the future if there's any other issues, which with Juno 106s, there often are. Um, you can see that these are very cheap on eBay right now. Um, I'll put more links in the uh, description as well. One thing we're gonna have to do to make it fit onto the board is actually pull one of the legs of the sockets out. You can remember that with the uh, voice chips, there's that little gap towards the end. Um, this is just going to make it so that way we can actually solder it to the board. We're also going to replace the legs on our voice chips with these guys. Uh, I'll put another link in the description. They're going to be a lot sturdier and make it a lot easier to pop them in and out whenever uh, you need to service the Juno. And we're also going to pull one of the legs out of these guys too. Soldering the sockets into the board is actually really easy. You can see here this is what it looks like when they're all done. Removing the legs from the voice chips is really easy too. Just uh, apply a little bit of heat and they should fall right off. Soldering the new legs on is actually really easy too as long as you have something that can hold it in place for you. And here are our finished voice chips. All right, so now take the voice chips and insert them into the sockets. Then you can take the circuit board and actually reinstall it back into your Juno. Um, this does fix about 90% of the problems people have with their voice chips, but sometimes a voice chip is just dead and needs to be replaced. Uh, if you need to do that, you can buy them online. Uh, so yeah, let me know how this works for you and thank you so much for watching.